podcast. Okay, guys, a little intro today. So, first off, I want to say I have been slacking on my reading. I know you girls have been asking me, like, okay, like, have you started your book yet? No, I have not. I don't. I the thing about reading right now and like our book club is like we were just talking about it the other day. We know that it's gonna take out so much time out of our day to read that book because it's gonna take us three to four hours each sitting, each sitting. So I just like I'm like oh my gosh I have not had. I guess I don't want to say I haven't had the time because we can always make the time, but I just haven't prioritized fun reading. I've been reading like my motivational books here and there when I read like a chapter or two a day, but my fun reading books I have been slacking on, but we are leaving to Georgia this week and we do have a few trips coming up. So I feel like traveling is the best time when I can catch up on reading because on the flights, there's nothing else to do besides read or fall asleep. So I will catch you guys up. I promise when I start reading my books. Okay. Number two. So I told you guys that we were going out this past weekend. Um, we ended up going to dinner and then we ended up going. I'm looking at Brittany guys because Brittany's sitting in the audience right now. And we ended up going. We were going to go to a casual bar. We went bar hopping. I don't like bar hopping. Okay. Like I don't wear the best shoes for it. I just don't like it. So if I can, I will get a section. So we ended up getting a little section at this bar standard and it was fun. They play Latin music. I like, like a mix of Latin hip hop and everything. So they did a really good job on like having it all mixed in there. Um, but we ended up going to the restroom and it always happens, which I'm really, really grateful for you guys, but you guys always come up to me when I'm drunk and I'm waiting in the line in the restroom and uh i can't remember your name but we took a selfie together and actually her friend was like hey my friend loves you so much and she's the reason that i listen to your podcast and can you take a photo with her and i'm like yeah sure girlfriend and i honestly don't know how that photo turned out because my eyes are probably super closed i don't know but i appreciate you girls so much i just also, I'm not the biggest fan of getting stopped when I'm drunk because I'm like, oh my gosh, I don't know if I'm making a fool out of myself right now. Uh, thankfully, I was like a six out of a 10, I would say. I wasn't too too deep into the drunkness level, but we had a good, good time. So I just wanted to catch you guys up on that. And then um, I just want to thank you girls because because of the podcast, you guys helped me out so much. Like I had a few girls reach out about the dress situation. Apparently, if you put double-sided boob tape on your thigh and on the dress it'll help it stay down or hairspray i don't know about the hairspray because i feel like you're supposed to put the hairspray on your thigh i would feel that your thigh would get sticky and i guess that's the reason why the dress would stick on your thigh but i just feel like what if you're like dancing and sweaty and then the the hairspray like it's just not a good combination but i will give it a try for you girls and let you girls know next time but i just appreciate this community because you guys are always like helping me out giving me some tips if i need something you guys are always there pulling through so i love you guys um but anyways let's get into today's episode all right today's episode is going to be showcase a little bit more around the entrepreneur entrepreneur lifestyle I wanted to bring in a guest who has made something in my eyes hard to sell into one of the top products in its niche. So I'm going to introduce today, Mr. Remington James, co-owner of Anabar. How are you today? I'm doing pretty good. How about yourself? Good. Are you excited to be on the podcast? I'm very excited. I'm excited because I rolled out. I didn't realize I'd be in such a nice part of town. Oh, thank you. Yeah, <laughs> how everything's beautiful. Thank you. Everything's thank great, you. professional. I love it. Thank you. Okay, so let's go get, let's dive into the questions right now. So, all right, before Anabar, what were you doing? Like Ooh, quite jobs. a bit. Quite okay. a bit. Um, Man, well, I started, I went to college. Okay. So like- Probably a lot of people can relate to this, okay. but when I graduated high school, I had no idea what I wanted to do. Oh yeah. No idea. My yeah. parents were like, you need to go to college. My mom's like, you need a nursing degree. You have to do this. I didn't even want to be a nurse. Okay. I don't even like helping people. Yeah. I'm kidding. I'm I, kidding. No, I no. no but, I can't see you as a nurse. <laughs> me neither. Okay. But, uh, so I went to school for like a year and a half. Um, did not take it seriously. Okay. It was one of those deals where my mom put me up in there. She gave me like a weekly allowance of like a hundred bucks to spend, but she paid all my bills. I just had to go to school. It was my only job. Okay. Failed miserably. So I dropped out, didn't know what to do. A lot of other stuff happens in between, but basically I tried to go back to college. Didn't work out. My mom goes, all right, I'm tired of helping you. You're just taking advantage of it. You need to just get a job. So I applied to a ton of places. My first actual, you know, in high school, we're just some fast food stuff. Like my first job as an adult was at the Circle K gas station. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So, uh, you know, talk about like, how do I put this? Like 
I don't, I'm not demeaning anybody that works at a gas station at all. Cause I did it, but talk about like you graduate high school, all your friends go off to college and you're working at the gas station yeah. and they stop in to buy a soda yeah. and you're behind the counter. Yeah. Yeah. You know, no, you know what I mean? Yeah. So did that for a while it was actually, um, pretty, I mean, good as, as good as you can be at it. They wanted to promote me to manager, but, um, it just so happened one time I was working and a guy came in and we had this job at, um, work where you had to like upsell a circle K. So if someone bought like a thing of M&Ms, yeah. you had to be like, Hey, these are two for three. Okay. Whatever. Right. Yeah, yeah. And we get graded on that based on like performance. They'd have people come in and uh, mystery shop us. Well, one day a guy came in and he's like talking to me. I'm trying to upsell him on a bunch of stuff. He goes, you're really good at this. I work. I'm the manager at the radio shack. If you want to come down, we sell cell phones mainly, but we uh-huh. do a bunch of other stuff. You can come down and try it out. So I started working at radio shack, did really well there. Got hired at sprint. I worked at sprint for four to five years. I won salesman of the year twice. Okay. Yeah. So I did really good. excelled at that job. And then, um, yeah, I kind of fell into the whole fitness thing, you know, after long, long break, a lot of stuff, but basically yeah. Yeah, I did cell phones for like five years, learned sales, did really well at it. And then, um, you know, YouTube is essentially just selling yourself, right. but to the world. Right. So I think I took what I learned there, started making videos and you just one day were like, I'm going to start making YouTube videos. Or um, were you following somebody uh, or? So what exactly happened was, I think for the longest time, I was so content with what I did. Like with my job, you know, I, I would make, I made decent money. I made like maybe like high thirties, low forties. Mm-hmm. Right. And that was for me in the small town I lived in cost of living. I mean, my, I bought a house when I was 21 mom co-signed for me, but my house payment was only like 480 bucks. Yeah. So I had a t- all my bills. didn't have a car payment to me. I was making a lot of money. Right. Right. But the job was commission based. So you'd get like basically like a little bit above minimum wage is like, a before commission. Yeah. And then you get like end of the month, massive $2,000 commission, right. or whatever. One month we had the towers in town go, go out. So like sprint was not working at all. It was all over Facebook, all over social media. No one was signing up. I didn't make any commission because I had minimums I'd hit. I didn't hit yeah. any. So it was one month. I basically made a little bit above minimum wage yeah. and it scared the crap out of me. Right. So I was like, there's gotta be a way to make money on the side. There's gotta be. So I got on Craigslist. I had this idea. I've always been a big like video gamer. I got on Craigslist and would look for people that were selling like old Nintendos, old okay. Nintendo DSs. Cause out of all the games, Nintendo holds their value the most. It's like an old school Mario game for Nintendo DS. They like other games, like uh, call of duty comes out a year later, you can get it for 20 bucks. Mario game comes out at 60. When it comes out, it might be 50 a year later, mm-hmm. two years later, it might be worth 70. Yeah. So I would find these people where I'm from. It's a lot of drug addicts, honestly. Yeah. So you'd find people that were just selling all of their stuff. They'd be like, Hey, Nintendo DS, all these games, hundred bucks cash. And I would get on, I would price them all out on eBay and I would go, well, if I sell all this, it's $400. Okay. So I would go give them cash, boom, they give me money back. And I remember one week I made a thousand dollars just like on the two days I had off driving around and doing all this flippy floppy selling on eBay. Yeah. And that was when my gears really started turning. I was like, wow, I'm not, I don't need somebody else right. to pay me. Yeah. I can pay myself. I can hustle and pay myself. Mm-hmm. So did that for a while, saved, a, I don't say a bunch of money, but saved up like a few thousand dollars doing that. And then I was, uh, Instagram at the time was like just starting to pop off. Yeah. And I'd been lifting. I got into fitness after, you know, a bad breakup. I started lifting and like, I was super into it, buying all the supplements, going to the Arnold Classic, doing the whole thing. And I was seeing people on Instagram with like followings and I free, uh, Joseph Rakish. Do you know who that is? Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. Okay. So he's a, uh, I think he's Australian, New Zealand. I mean, yeah, he, he's not from here, but I remember I followed him on Instagram. He'd always post pictures with his shirt off, just incredible physique doing cool stuff. And I was always just thought he was a cool guy. And then one time he posted a picture, he's standing next to a Lamborghini. And I was like, okay. wait, what? You're like, what the hell? How does he have a Lamborghini? Yeah, and yeah. I looked, I went to his website and I saw he like sold coaching plans, training plans, did all the shit. And I was like, wait a minute. So people are paying him to make them meal plans. Yeah. Like what? Uh, yeah. So in my brain I go, cause you know, at the time I'm still doing my little, uh, cause the eBay thing dried up a little bit. It was like, I went, I kind of bought a bunch of stuff. And then like my town was so small that there wasn't a consistent supply. I'd have to drive into Columbus. That became really risky. I bought a stolen iPad and lost like 600 bucks, oh, shit, yeah. things like that with an iCloud lock on it. So it was a little, a uh, little tricky. So I was like, well, I love fitness. I can get certified to be a personal trainer. I can write meal plans for people. Yeah. So I got certified through the ISSA, super easy. And then I was like, I'm gonna start making meal plans. Started with like 20 bucks a pop to people. Mm-hmm. And then I decided, okay, I didn't have a website or anything at the time. It was all like local stuff. I was like, I need to make a website. So I spent, what I do? I got on Fiverr. At the time I was trying to do everything as cheap as possible. So I got on Fiverr and literally it was just, I paid someone, I bought the domain, remingtonjamesfitness.com. And I paid someone to make a landing page, yeah. which is just a one page thing with like three button links for three programs. It was super, like you click the link, give you no info, just take yeah. you straight to PayPal to pay. Yeah, They would get 
like they would email me that they paid. I had to like email them, right? So I set this website up. Didn't really, uh, had a couple of local people sign up, but nothing really crazy happened. And then I told myself like- um, How old were you at the time? Oh, what am I now? So I'm 31 now, time maybe 24, okay. 25. Okay. Um, so I set the website up and I was getting some, some clients, making a little extra money, but it was nothing obviously life-changing. And then I said, well, YouTube is something I should probably do. Instagram was gonna be my focus, but YouTube was what I was going to do just so if people came, my goal was like make like 10 videos, that way, if people came to see, like, what am I about? Listen to me speak, whatever. Right. They had, like, a place to go and they could see it. Right. So I wanted to do that, but even starting it, I had no idea what was going on. So, like, here, the difference is in Texas, when you go to Alpha Land, for instance, Alpha Elite, whatever, and, like, you walk in, you see camera crews. Yeah. You see people doing this. So yeah. it becomes normalized. So easy. Now I see someone with a camera, I don't even think twice about it. Yeah. Right? But where I'm from, small town, Southern Ohio. Oh, yeah. I had never, there, a, you, no one was a YouTuber. Yeah. There wasn't one YouTuber in town. Yeah. At the time. So it was, I remember I got invited to a, uh, this guy hits me up, fitness guy in town. He's like, hey, like, we're shooting a video at the gym. You should come if you want to be in it. I was like, okay, cool. I had yeah. no idea. So I show up. There's like a dude holding a camera, which at the time I'd never even, never even seen that. You know, and he's filming, we're all working out, terrible video, but it, <laughs> but it came, no direction, nothing. It was just literally an edit, yeah. a terrible edit, but it came down to like, I remember we filmed and then it was like a week later, I kept asking where the video was and like the person who was supposed to edit it, like didn't have the time. So I said, send me the footage. I'll yeah. try it out. Downloaded uh, what I had, Windows Movie Maker on a really crappy Windows PC. Oh, I know what you're talking about. Yeah, uh, it was terrible. Yeah, yeah, yeah. But I chopped it together, made this terrible video <laughs> that's still on my channel. I might yeah. have it hidden. It's like the first one I ever did. <laughs> but I made the video. I remember just like something clicked. I was like, that wasn't hard at all. Yeah. At all. So from there, that's when uh, that same camera guy that shot that video, I like was like, hey, I'll give you like 20 bucks. Come film me. I'll edit it. Da, da, da. We put together my first 10 videos. And like I said, Instagram was was going to be my focus. My goal was like, hey, Instagram's, because I was following Joseph Rakich's lead, because yeah. that dude was killing it. So I was right. like, Instagram's where it's at. YouTube is just like, whatever. I made a video called Meal Prep for Beginners. Awful video. Terrible. I'm so nervous in it. Like, it's so funny because you'll watch the cuts were so bad. Because I'm like, all right, guys, now let's meal prep. I got a smile on face. You don't see my smile go. And then it cuts. Because <laughs> I'm just like trying to look professional. Yeah, yeah, yeah. It was so, it was so bad. But, you know, I always tell this story, but- made these videos and it was depressing to look at them not doing well. Yeah. So I quit looking, obviously. Yeah. So when you go into your YouTube studio, it'll show you how much money you made, right? Yeah. And it was always stuck at a penny. I remember yeah. that, I would check it every day. Am I making money, I'm making money. It was always stuck at a penny. So I decided I was gonna quit checking it. And then I got on one day and checked and there was like 80 bucks in there. Oh shit. And I was like, what happened? So I looked and I scrolled back and that meal prep video had like 100,000 views. And a lot of people, a lot of people loved it. Yeah. So then in my brain I go, I just need to make that same video as many ways as I can a million different times. Yeah. And I just did that. And then boom, next thing you know, websites lighten up, plans are coming in, making money. Yeah. I remember one day I went to work because I was still working at the time. I went to work and in that day, it was something crazy, but I made like 600 bucks on just coaching plans. Uh -huh. And I was like, what? Like, I can't, like, this, this is what I need to be doing. Yeah. So I eventually dropped a part time and then uh, saved money, had enough money. I knew I could pay my bills for probably like, a year if I was frugal, Yeah. quit my job, switched to YouTube full time. And as soon as I made the switch, I was so, what do you call it? I was so like, I just didn't know what to do Yeah. besides make content that I spent half a year straight. And I, every single day, I didn't miss a day for half a year. It ended up being like 180 days, 170, something like that. Yeah. Every single day, put a video out shot edited by me. Didn't miss oh, a day. Shit. Didn't miss a day for half a year. And that's how yeah. I initially hit hundred thousand subscribers and like, yeah, really started making money. That's so crazy. Yeah, it was it was wild. I feel like you're very you were very driven at that age. Like it's really mm -hmm. hard to, you know, for some some people, you know, they want to be successful but they're not. They just don't have that drive. Mm -hmm. But you were very driven even like maybe not when you were 19, 20 wanted to go to school, right, but right. I feel like this clicked and you were especially with your sales background. I feel uh -huh. like you were very good at sales. Yeah, and it well it's one of those things where I think uh, a lot of people don't want don't have the drive to be successful simply because they've never been in a position where they're forced to try to be right, successful. Yeah. Like if it wasn't for that time when the towers were out and I made no commission. Yeah. So when it came time to pay my bills, I basically like wiped out my bank account to pay my bills yeah. and that scared the shit out of me. Yeah. So if it wasn't for that, I don't know where I'd be right now. Yeah. Cause it was that, that like that scarcity right. that made me have to like 
Did you have um, like a mentor back then that was like, oh, <laughs> this is how you do a website? No. Yeah. See, that's what <laughs> no. a lot of people think. Like, same with us. Like, we're from a small town in Georgia where no one picked up a camera. So when Chris was like, pick up the camera, I would be so scared and people would be like, why is she? Like, they were oh, yeah. about to make it a rule in the gym that I couldn't film just because they were like, yeah. what the hell does she think she's doing? So, like, it, it was just scary. But it, people think that you have like, you had some secret. And I'm like, there's huh. no fucking secret. There's Thankfully, none. we have the internet. Yeah, yeah. And we just did things on our own, too. Like, yeah, our my fucking first YouTube video is when you go look back. <laughs> I'm just like, holy crap, this is awful. But that's how you learn. Even now, like, this well, is how you learn. Isn't it crazy how when you start doing something different, the people around you get all weird? Yeah, they do. Yeah, I lost, like... I have like three friends left back yeah, home. They yeah. all got so weird. They all yeah. talked about how I changed, how I became the yeah. problem. Yeah. Meanwhile, they're drunk at the bar every weekend, going through their third divorce yeah. on their fifth kid. Yeah. No, like, yeah. Like, like, what are y'all doing? Yeah, no, same, same, same. We probably have like two still like good friends. Other than that, you know, same. They're like mm -hmm. on their fifth kid. I'm not that it's a bad thing, guys. Not that it's a bad thing if that's what you want. But when you are from a small town and you're doing something different, mm -hmm. that's when people are like, oh, no, that person's changed. And it's like, no, we just wanted to do I, something for ourselves. I clearly remember. So I drive. A, right now I have a BMW i8 yeah. that I bought in 20. 19 or 18. Uh -huh. Yeah. It's towards the end of 2018. I bought a BMW i8 and it was the weirdest thing. And I still remember it to this day. I mean, I bought the, so like at the time I was driving a Lexus, really loved it, whatever. And I had this certain like reputation about me, but as soon as I bought the i8 automatically, the narrative shifted about who I was as a person. Yeah. It was the strangest thing. Cause it's like, I haven't changed at all. Yeah. I'm just, I just bought a new car, yeah, but yeah. then all of a sudden, because I drive a nicer, more exotic looking. It's not even a, it's not a Lambo. Yeah. It was, it was a BMW i8, but yeah. just because I drove that car automatically, I think a, I'm better than everybody. Yeah. B I've changed. Yeah. C I'm too good for this small town. I need to go. The amount of times I heard like, like don't forget your roots. Yeah. Holy shit. I'm gonna dig that tree up and burn it. Yeah. No, like, honestly, it's so crazy. I mean, this has nothing to do with the interview right now, but <laughs> we literally think the same thing. And it's hard because we, we go back, I don't know about you, but we go back home to visit yes. our families. And it's almost like I tell Chris, I'm like, I feel like I have to make myself small because I don't want to hurt anyone's feelings. Yes. But it's like, I shouldn't have to be that way. Like, mm -hmm. I feel like I close myself off when people ask, Oh, how are you doing? I'm like, Oh, good. Like, I don't, Tell them anything yeah. because I'm like, I don't want to come off as braggy. I don't want to come off as this or that. But they already know because they keep up with my social media. So it's like, oh, well, so-and-so is just trying to hide it. But it's not that. It's just like you ch you want to be yourself. But then at the same time, if you are yourself, like, oh, she thinks she's too good. Oh, but we hear it all the time. Like, you have to remain humble. Remember where you came from. I'm like, I know where I came of from. Course. I do stay humble. But that doesn't mean I can't you know, reward myself with nice things. So big, big I, ideas offend small minds. Yeah, no, I, agree. and I feel like, uh, what was, it? I think Russ said, he's like success is a mirror for some. It makes them look at themselves and see what they haven't done. Yes. yes you know, I and it's like, that. it's like, and a lot of people want to say like, it's luck, it's X, it's yeah. Y, da, 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 you do it because you're, you know, probably in your instance, they're like, oh, it's because you're beautiful. Yeah, yeah, Or in my instance, it's because, I don't even fucking know. <laughs> I'm not beautiful. But it's I'm like, a handsome dude. Yeah, yeah. No, but, I know. But it's like the amount of like, like, all right, do a video for half a year straight then. Yeah. Edit it. Shoot it yourself. Think yeah. up that content. Yeah. Do that. Yeah. So during that time, what do you think your biggest struggle was? Oh my gosh. You know, that time is such a weird blur because I worked so, I mean, my biggest struggle was I mean, stress maybe, yeah. but like, it was so weird because during that time, it just felt like it never ended. Yeah. Like I remember there were times, <laughs> so biggest struggles. There was a time, one time where I was, it was late. Cause I had this, these deadlines I'd hit. I do one every day. And I was yeah. like obsessed with that. Right. I remember one night I was editing a video cause my videos would come out at like nine at night. Yeah. Wake up in the morning, film something, start editing at like four, have it out by like nine oh, as fast okay. as I could. So one night I was editing a whole video. I get clear to the end and I'm exhausted. Mm -hmm. And next thing you know, the Premiere Pro crashes. My video didn't save. I'd edit it from the beginning and I had to sit there and make that decision. Wow, do I break the streak? We're on day like 100? Yeah. Or do I edit this thing again? It took everything in me because yeah. I was so tired, so exhausted. Like, you know, and during this whole time, going to the gym, yeah. cardio, meal prepping, all that stuff. Yeah. And it was, uh, and I was like, I gritted my teeth, edited it, got it out. And then um, I still remember the day that I, quit doing it was like half a year in i quit uh doing the daily uploads and it was such a relief because i went to every other day yeah. and i was like wow yeah i have time to <laughs> cut my nails yeah take a nap like, or yeah, something anything yeah and i think like with you too like you didn't have any guidance and like i would say like the the biggest struggle was probably like you had that deadline for yourself you could have easily been like oh i don't have to do it mm -hmm. but you you because you didn't have a boss to like quote unquote check right. in with but you had to do it for yourself and it's like no one was guiding you 
throughout this journey you mm-hmm. were doing it on your own 100%. like you could have simply been like fuck it like i'll just edit it in the morning or whatever but it you guys don't realize how hard it is to like that's committing to yourself 100 percent. of course like i cannot fucking fail this because then i fail myself mm-hmm. but that's great i mean that's that's awesome all right. right so you got into fitness and then what made you decide okay like i want to start a protein bar company you know, ironically enough, uh, the I, like Anabar itself, there wasn't this thing where I thought like going into it that Anabar was going to be this massive thing. Okay. It literally, we like we really got lucky okay. in a lot of ways. So um, Final Boss Performance is the supplement company I own. Okay. We're actually in the process of liquidating it and closing it down okay. and focusing solely on Anabar. Okay. So you started that first? Yes. Okay. Yes. Yeah, okay. so we started that in 2018, early 2018, Final okay. Boss Performance. So we started with like... Um, it was me and a business partner. I think we each invested like 25,000 or something. And we started with uh, two flavors of aminos, one of them, both flavors caffeinated, one in decaf. And then we had a pre-workout. I think that was it. Yeah, at the launch. And it was super janky. We put everything in bags, not containers. We couldn't afford containers, Mm -hmm. did all this stuff. But as we grew, we add greens, we add protein, we kind of build the lineup. And then like the brand always did okay, but it's not we were making really any money. We were just trying to build the brand. And then we had a... One of my, my business partner had an old friend that I know reach out to him. He got a job working for a protein bar manufacturer. Okay. He reaches up. He's like, Hey, like I just got a job with these guys. They're really unique. They're the way that they formulate things. It's like all natural, all this other stuff. He's like, if you want to try, we'll send you some samples. If you guys would like to add a bar to your lineup. Okay. So we were like, okay, yeah, it's just going to be like another supplement. It's just right. another thing to add to the list. Another thing to sell, increase average cart volume and all that. So we start sampling the bars and obviously they were incredible. And we were just like, okay, like we got something on our hands. Still didn't think it would be what it is. And I think honestly, a lot of it came down to obviously the bar, the product itself was phenomenal, but I think the branding's perfect. Yeah. yeah like, cause, cause we were, we were trying to think of a name and when you have a business partner, you have to come to agreements on things. Yeah. I can't just go, this should be the name. Right. And if he's upset or vice versa. Right. So we were trying to think of a name that worked for both of us. So like on my YouTube channel, I do a lot with like the anabolic dieting and anabolic recipes, things like that. And on his channel, it's all about anabolic steroids. Uh-huh. So we were trying to think of a name. We were hung up on it, hung up on it. We're in the gym one day just lifting. I just have a, like a thought pop in my head and I go, what about Anabar? And he goes, dude, yeah. yeah, yeah. That's and then, the best, yeah. Yeah, and it, but it was like, I look at like all the competition and stuff right now, especially. I feel like Anabar, just the name alone just says so much and yeah. it just rolls off the tongue yeah, it and it's does. fun to say. Yeah, yeah. It's not intimidating. It gets yeah. the point across. Yeah. And um, so yeah, we, we got the... Got the bars. I think we started, how many boxes did we have at launch? Maybe like 6,000 or so boxes. We did 2,000 of each flavor. We started with three flavors and we launched and I, you know, hyped the crap out of it, talked about it. Didn't, once once again, I didn't expect it to do what it did. Because you were relying on your following on YouTube to support yes, this, right? Yes, okay. 100%. And okay. I think the day before we launched, I was running around like a chicken with my head cut off. I ran over to Charlie Coker. Mm-hmm. Gave him boxes, mm-hmm. filmed him, ran to us, you know, Sush and James, yeah, yeah, yeah. English, ran to them. So their following really helped too. But uh, we launched that night at eight o'clock at night. And I remember we sat there and in the first like 10 minutes, we made like $50,000. Oh, shit. And it was, and then we sat there and then like, it was like in the first 30 minutes, we made like 100000 Me and Ank were on the phone, couldn't even believe what was happening. Yeah. I've never seen anything like it. Okay. And then within, I think it was within two hours, we were completely sold out. I think we it was something over like $200,000 in sales. Oh, shit. But and, this was still under your your supplement. Yeah, yeah. Okay, it's because yeah. it was just a bar that we released. I mean, it looked like a completely different brand. Yeah, yeah. It was Anna Bar. That's kind of the way we promoted it. But yeah. I mean, it was under the same company. Yeah, yeah. So they went to finalbossformance.com to buy it. Yeah. But we watched that happen. I remember we were on the phone and like, he like calls his dad and I call my mom and I'm yeah. sending screenshots. I just couldn't even believe it. And it was rent. Then when everything clicked that I'm, cause this time no one had tried it. Yeah. The bar. So yeah. we didn't, you know what I mean? We hadn't even had a cut like customer feedback, but it was just the idea that I understood now why all these other companies did the launch hype culture, yeah. sell out stuff. Yeah, yeah. Because if you can build that and then you can sell it and then it like, and then the sellout itself creates even more buzz right? because people are like, Oh, I wanted that. I couldn't get it. Right. What makes it so good that it sells out in 30 minutes, right? you know? And then from there we had another launch, did the same thing. Sold so out you kept the, typing it before. Yeah. Launch. Yeah, yeah, yeah. yeah. And then I uh, sold out again. And then, yeah, now we're, I mean, we're on pace. We went in that first launch with Anabar, that first month with Anabar, we did more in revenue that month than we did the entire previous year with the supplements alone. That's insane. Yeah, yeah. So, that is crazy. Yeah. So, but and something I do want to say because now that I'm listening to you, like your journey hasn't been like 
I want people to understand that you, what you see on social media, sometimes you think like they went, it's from one year, the success happened from one year to another. Like you're like, mm -mm. the journey has been long. Like you didn't just come out with a protein bar right after like you made YouTube videos. It's been no. how many years now? Yeah. I mean, it's been, I started YouTube, I think in 2017. Yeah. So what, what is it now? Yeah. So, uh, I started YouTube in 2016. So it's been like, yeah, yeah five, six years. six years. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. So and you started your supplement company what, like in maybe 2018, early 2018. Okay, so that'll yeah. be, yeah, about four, four years. years. Yeah. So yeah. it's a process guys. Oh like, yeah. He didn't just get successful from that one YouTube video. And then the next day he came out with a protein bar and bam, like it, it takes time. But like the protein bar too, it's the culmination of yeah. a lot of other knowledge and skills I've developed right. with, I mean, because before this supplement company I have now, I was a co-owner of another supplement company with three other business partners. Okay. So it was like, I learned a lot through there, what to do and what not to do. Then with the supplements, you learn a ton about yeah. branding, about how to word things. And right. it's, it's, you know, and the, it's a, the point I love to make to people is that Anabar, I didn't think Anabar would even be what it is now. That's yeah. the thing. It's like, you might have five things you want to do and the first four might not work out. And you might yeah. go, well, the fifth one I'm going to do, but it's yeah. not going to be that big. And then yeah, you do yeah. it. And then that's the one. Yeah. 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 Cause you look at any of these massive entrepreneurs, like a lot of them have all these different business ventures that have failed and failed and failed. But the key between all of them the thing that makes them all similar is that they just never gave up and they kept yeah, going they keep going and then something sticks there no, you go I, I agree um what would you say you were most afraid of when you st or was there anything that you were kind of like hesitant when you were coming out with the protein bar um honestly the only thing i was worried about uh, was that our bar compared to competitors definitely has a few more calories okay so like you know like a quest bar for instance seven grams of protein or i'm sorry seven grams of fat 20 grams of protein 23 grams of carbs 13 grams of fiber on average so us we're more like 11 grams of fat 21 grams of protein 27 28 grams of carbs yeah so we're a little heavier and i figured we'd get criticism for that which we have but i mean but people still <laughs> buy bar them. is amazing yeah. yeah but the one up one i was just telling Brittany about it because we were at the gym it's yeah, it's, it might be like 50 calories less, but I mean, it all depends on like your macros and what you're watching. Cause their carbs are like close to like 55 mm -hmm. and y'all's aren't. So it just mm -hmm. depends on obviously like what you're watching. But I mean, Chris tried the s'mores one. He was like, this is a fucking candy bar. Like, <laughs> yeah, it what is. What the hell? Like, it really it tastes is. amazing. Yeah. Thank um, you. but yeah. Okay. All right. So next question. Sorry. I got off track there. <laughs> you're good. Um, so did you ever, I guess, you ever, did you ever doubt the idea of a protein bar? Um, I can't say that I did. Yeah. No, I think that, um, honestly, once we tried them, yeah. We, okay. Okay. So at first we definitely doubted it because before trying them, I mean, we knew it was going to be a different type of protein bar, but I was like, who's going to buy when there's so many options available, they're already so cheap. We're not going to make any money. There's hardly yeah. any margin. Yeah. It was just going to be like everybody else's bar with some terrible branding. Cause yeah. at the time we didn't have the Anabar name. So it's like, what do we toss our final boss dragon on there, yeah, the logo, yeah. all that branding, in my opinion, now it's, it's outdated. Yeah. So it's like, yeah, first, obviously we didn't know, but as things started coming together and the puzzle pieces started clicking, cause like I said, it wasn't that we had no company and the idea was start a protein bar company. Right. The idea was we have a supplement company that we've already made money. We'll use that money to invest in the bars. Right. So it's just kind it's of a little different. Yeah. Yeah. Just building the brand. Cause I feel like for me, my biggest fear, like if I was starting from fresh, like before having a supplement company be like, okay, like how do I even get flavors? Like I oh, think yeah. having that in, cause you guys had a friend that we did. Okay. So having that in kind of helps. Cause if you're starting from like scratch, it's like, well, I don't know anything about like the, f the food process that goes into it. So before I got into YouTube, I remember sitting up there when I was trying to figure out the entrepreneurial ideas. So this is when I was selling all the video games. I sat in my room and I told myself I wanted to have my own supplement company. Right. Okay. No idea where to start, what to yeah. do, nothing. So I remember I just took a bunch of empty supplement containers that I'd been keeping, took them up to my room, started looking at the labels and Googling the manufacturers on the back, okay. got in contact with one and they wanted like 50,000 to start. And at the time I was like, yeah. that ain't happening. Yeah, yeah. So that was my initial process yeah, yeah, was yeah. like Googling the back of labels. And uh, obviously I, I, I knew nothing, yeah, yeah. but it's one of those things though. It's like you talked about men mentors. I, you know, Max Tuning has been a good mentor Lately with Anabar, he's given me a ton I, and more, more so my business partner than me, but just a ton of advice on what to do, warehousing, inventory, all that type of stuff. Yeah. So it's been fantastic. But a lot of people, I always tell people this, if you want to do something, no matter what it is, let's say you want to start a t-shirt company, you want to make shoes, whatever you want to do, you got to look at someone that's doing what you're doing at a high level and just emulate them. Yeah, exactly. Literally that's just so see what, the, yeah, because I mean, some people might say that's, uh, I don't know stealing, copying, whatever you want to call it. But like, I mean, they're successful for a reason. Yeah. And, and like I mean, that. everyone does it. Like how many ways can you make a fucking t-shirt? You know there what I mean? Go. Like I tell, I just told the girls that the other day, cause someone who was like, oh, well making content is saturated. I was like, 
No, it's not. And then I like the girls that I love their content. I literally fucking copy. I don't copy their workouts, but what song do they use? What time do they post? Right. Because I'm going to do the same thing because right. if theirs blew up for a, mi- at a million right. views, it's probably because of what they're doing. Of so course. you do have to copy, copy what other people are doing. You know, well, I mean, if there's a way, if someone's successful and they're doing something, obviously something they're doing is working. Right. If you just try to wing it and you put your videos out at three in the morning and right. your thumbnail is a black box. Yeah, you know, like yeah. it's not gonna work. So you get, you have to. There's some element to it always, right. and then you bring in, you know, everybody's different. So your content's automatically going to be different because you are different. Right, right. You know, I, I think agree. the problem might lie when you see how someone maybe uh, tells jokes and then you try to be someone you're not. I think that's yeah. the problem because like, early on in YouTube, I tried to be. I don't want to say something I'm not, but I tried to be very professional, very like, "Hey guys, how are we doing today?" Yeah, and it, yeah, it just. It was so hard to keep up. Yeah, yeah, it, yeah. Was, it just wasn't me. Yeah, yeah, yeah. No, you know? no, I agree. Um, okay, so did you have support when you were making your supplement company or the pro team? I guess you have support from your business partner, but did you have support from family, f- other friends while you were making your brands? Um, so I would say that at the time we were starting those, I'd already established myself on YouTube. Okay. Yeah. So I would say everybody already believed in me. But yeah. if we're talking about support, I mean, starting the YouTube channel was the thing. I remember talking to my mom about it and I was telling her like the money I was making and all this and all that. And I was like, I think I'm going to quit my job. She begged me not to quit. Yeah. She's like, this isn't a long-term thing. Yeah. You know, like this is a good career. You've done well there. You can move up there. Like you should just stay there. Begged me not to quit. Yeah. Cause she just didn't understand. Yeah. They just don't understand. I mean, especially back then. Yeah. You know, that was a little different. Now it's like, it's just so much more commonplace for people to be social media influencers. And I mean, right. there's so many platforms you can make a living off of, but like back then, especially in my small town, Same. it's not like she ever went around friends. They're like, yeah, my son does YouTube or does Twitch. Yeah. Literally no. No, no you either. Like embarrassed to say, yeah. oh, you still have a job. <laughs> like, yeah, no, I, I mean, like you either went to school or you worked at one of the factories in town. Yeah. Or you started doing drugs. That's the same there's with our town. Well, not that I don't think the drug part for us, but it was either you go to school, you work in the office or yeah, like you that's, that's, or you work at a plant. Mm-hmm. And I mean, parents, our parents were more happy with us doing something like that. than when we were like, Oh, you know, we're going to, I'm going to do YouTube. They didn't understand the concept. So then when we moved from Georgia here, they were like, Oh no, they're not going to make it. Yep. They're going to move back within a month. Like everyone were like, they're not going to make it. They're going to move back within a month. And to this day, they're like, I, you know, we applaud you guys because we don't know how the hell you guys did it, but mm-hmm. no one believed that you guys were going to do <laughs> yeah. it. And it's, you know, it's just, nowadays, like you said, people understand it a little bit more because of TikTok and especially now because of TikTok, there's mm-hmm. so many influencers now that have just risen up because of TikTok. But back in the day, like this wasn't a thing. Mm-mm. So yeah, to have support back in the day was not. Well, and it's like, if you had TikTok now, like you can have uh, like Sush, mm-hmm. his whole YouTube came from TikTok. Yeah. He had a huge TikTok following. Yeah. Hey, follow me on YouTube. Boom. All these subscribers and views out of nowhere. Back yeah. then on YouTube, it was like, you were at the mercy of the algorithm. Yeah. Cause yeah. it was like, all right, you gotta, cause like YouTube was, I mean, I guess you could have been big on Instagram. But like I always found Instagram and YouTube never crossed over well. Yeah. Trying to get people off of YouTube onto Instagram or vice versa. Yeah. Never crossed over well. Yeah. But it was like, back then it was just, you were at the mercy of the algorithm. I was just hoping that my thumbnail and my title trended. Yeah. Yeah. And it was like, I could do a meal prep video and I could look back like a few months later and it have like over a hundred thousand views. I could do a vlog day in the life and I could look back and have 2000. Yeah. Yeah. So it was like, yeah, no. Um, okay. So what do you see? Okay. So it's easy to say the product is saturated. What made you think that you were going to be successful with Anabar? Honestly, it was just so good. Yeah. It just tasted so good. I just knew that it tasted unlike any other. I mean, I'm a, I've done a, I probably like at least 10 videos on my channel where I've reviewed protein bars. My uh, business partner actually owned a supplement store. So we would go in there all the time and just eat and sample. And I've had over a hundred protein bars. It feels like and I just knew ours was completely different. Yeah. It tasted amazing. Yeah. So I think that, yeah, if I, if we were to drop a protein, bar, like if we dropped just a quest bar with our label on it, what's that going to do? Yeah. You know, there's a lot of people, um, there's a big influencer right now that just dropped his own protein bars and they're absolute garbage. He's yeah. wondering why they're not selling because yeah. he just copied and did what everybody else did. He had yeah. brought nothing unique to the table. Yeah, yeah. So it's like, I think when you have a standout product, like I believe ours is, then, I mean, the writing's on the wall. The one thing I kept saying to my business partner, we were like, you know, we put a lot of money in this. Hopefully it pays off. We have all this inventory, all this stuff. Like what if no one buys it? I was like, all we got to do is get people to try it. Yeah. Once they try it, they're good. Yeah. Come to find out that was true. Yeah, that was it. So what do you, would you say the flavor is what sets you guys apart? 
I, I, would, I would say it's everything. Okay. I would say it's the flavor for sure, but it's the mouthfeel, it's the consistency, it's the texture. Um, I think our branding's uh, pretty unique in the space. It's bright, it's colorful. Yeah. We have fun with the brand. Yeah. I mean, you've seen our social media. We have an excellent person that runs it. Oh yeah, uh, she yeah. does amazing. <laughs> she, she I does. will say that I think branding is so important, especially with a product and your branding is just it's amazing. It Your is. social media page. It is. is. You just want to try the product. You're like, man, there's, these people are putting a lot of effort yeah. into this product, so it has to be good. It, and so when they get it and they it, it, it like matches that, mm -hmm. it's like, okay, shit, I'm gonna get, I'm gonna keep buying this. And when I knew we had a good product, how I knew was that I remember going on a vacation with my family early on when I was into fitness. I remember I bought a couple boxes of Quest bars on Amazon, took them with me on this vacation. It was like, I was right brand new into fitness. It was the first time I ever went on a vacation with my family and I had abs. So I was so proud. I was like, I got to keep this going. So I brought all these quest bars. We'd be at the beach and I would hand my mom and sister. They'd be like, Hey, let me try one. Hand them each quest bar. They each took like a bite, hated it. Yeah. And then they came down and visited me down here when I had my samples. I gave me each a sample. They each ate the whole thing, loved it. And then the next day my sister goes, Hey, do you have any more of those? Yeah. That's how I knew. Yeah. Cause like, when someone that doesn't like protein bars will sit and eat it. Cause yeah. when you hear protein bar, you think yeah. chalky, you yeah. think indigestion. Yeah. You think all sorts of shit. Yeah. Doesn't taste like it says, but when you need an anabar, yeah. like I, I always tell people this, this is what I said a lot early in the beginning is like, if you took a bunch of anabars, placed them on a big plate and sat them out at like a family dinner or reunion and said, someone brought baked goods. They baked these. Yeah. They'd have no idea. Yeah. They'd be like, Oh wow. Yeah. It's funny that you say that. Cause Brittany kept telling us you guys need to try protein bars. You guys need to try it. And I'm not a big protein bar person. I will tell yeah, you yeah. that I, I just, I'm not, I don't like the taste. And then she, it was literally like recently, like a month ago, she was, she's like, oh my God, I love, she's always raving about it. I'm like, yeah, yeah, it's cause you work with the company. And then she was like, she was eating one. She was just like eating it so good. I was like, can I have a bite? And she was like, yeah. And I was like, oh my gosh, this is the best yeah. bite I've ever had. So now I'm like addicted to them too. So I think, especially with any product like that, but food, if it tastes amazing, uh -huh. that, that's, that's the number one thing. Of course. I mean, yeah. that's, that's, that's the reason some people go spend a thousand dollars on a dinner. Yeah. You yeah, know, yeah. <laughs> right. So it's yeah. like, it's something, I mean, at the end of the day, food needs to taste good. Protein yeah. bar should be food. Yeah. yeah. Like, like I remember one of our slogans we worked with, we didn't end up approving it. Cause like we basically go with like the best tasting protein bar was the yeah. market with, but like, we wanted to be like, finally a protein bar that doesn't suck. Yeah. But it was a little close to max tuning because yeah, it was yeah. like sour candy that doesn't, or it's actually sour something. Yeah. But, uh, yeah. Cause yeah. No, well, tastes it's, great. Yeah, it, it tastes great. Okay, so what would you say your biggest struggle has been now? Mm, with like just all all over? Yeah. Or um, okay, not just business. Well, I mean both. Okay, all over happiness. Okay. Trying to trying to figure out how to be happy. Okay. It's uh, it's been. Um, do you think balance has to do with it? <sighs> you know, I I used to think that. Yeah. And then I give myself balance, and I'm unhappier. Yeah. You know what I, I mean? Know what you mean? Yeah. So yeah. it's like. I've been doing a lot of mental work lately trying to figure out why why have I achieved everything more so than I ever thought I would achieve in my life and why am I still unhappy? Yeah. Why do I still feel like like why do I feel less happy than I felt when I worked at Sprint and didn't have a business and yeah. didn't have all this fancy stuff that I'd yeah. love, you know what I mean? All this like why am I not happy? Do you think it's because you're constantly wanting more? Uh, you know, I've had to do a lot of uh, thinking about this. Mm -hmm. And I think my biggest problem has been not living in the moment. Okay. Anytime I'm sitting down, I try to relax. I'm thinking about what I have to do tomorrow. Right. I'm thinking about what the next video is, what the next step is. I've been extremely, I don't know, like hard on myself in a lot of ways. And I haven't, I'm trying to think of the best way to phrase this. It's been... I've struggled with it my whole life, really. Like being, not feeling good enough, not feeling like, you know, I grew up in a family where my sister was definitely the prized possession and I was like the black sheep. Okay. I was the one that was like, go play your video games in the room. You know, I grew up in a family where we never really, we never told each other we loved each other or hugged each other. Okay. And um, I just think that my whole life I struggled. This is stuff I never even started thinking about until like six months ago. Yeah. Like I went my whole life where all I ever really wanted, what it boils down to, I think, is just my mom to tell me she was proud of me and to yeah. hug me and tell me she loved me. Yeah. It's all I ever wanted. Yeah. And it recently I've started getting that. Yeah. It's helped a lot. Okay, it, good. You know, it's helped yeah. a ton. Yeah. So I, I can say for the, probably the first time in my life, I'm finally figuring out what happiness is. Yeah. Not just temporary, like I'm drunk happiness, but like actually waking up and being happy with who I am. Right. You know, happy with what I've achieved, happy with who's in my life. And um, yeah. yeah, I think a lot of it comes from gratitude, like yeah. waking up and realizing, you know, cause it was, it was like, okay, I buy new cars, buy a house, I wake up. And then I looked at, like, I see someone on Instagram and I go, 
man, I don't have that Lamborghini. Yeah. And that was the problem, yeah, the comparison. Yeah, but yeah. instead, it's understanding that we're all in like a different part of the journey and still realizing that even if there's people around me that are that are killing it, we're all, you know, we're all on the same ladder. They might be here, I might be here. Someone, but someone else is always gonna be here. Yeah. And it's about appreciating what you have in the moment. Yeah. Cause I was terrified forever that I was gonna grow up and become, you know, an old man. And I never even actually like lived. Yeah. Like I just started going on trips and vacations by myself like a year ago. Yeah. And that's 30 years old. That's crazy. I would not let myself go on trips. I wouldn't let myself go do anything. It was all work, 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 right. work. Cause if I didn't, I was going to fall behind. I wasn't going to be successful. Yeah. yeah. So, I mean, I think I applaud you for being an entrepreneur and then taking the time to like, look at your mental health mm -hmm. and look at the inside. Cause a lot of people don't take the time. They right. don't, they don't prioritize that. And, as someone who has recently too, because honestly, because I've met Brittany too, and she is a big advocate on that. I started looking at my life more like that because I struggle with the same thing. Whereas like, we're at a point where, you know, we have the cars, we have the house and there's still a part of me that's unhappy. And right. I don't know why I'm unhappy. And sometimes it's guilt. You know, sometimes I feel like I still draw, uh, deal with guilt because I made it out of my town. Whereas my family's still back there. Right. Sometimes it's okay. I'm guilty because I'm sitting on the couch and I'm not doing more and other people are doing more. Mm -hmm. And then being, I love being here in Houston, but it's easy to compare yourself. Like you said, with everyone around you so successful of course. and you know, yeah, I'm not like at the bottom, you know, but I'm probably like in the middle, but you're all like, there's days where you're like, okay, but they're doing more, they're doing more. So mm -hmm. I need to do more. I need to do more. And no, I feel like I, it, that's the hard part about being an entrepreneur and being in like, I would say like the fitness community, especially too, and being around other people who are so successful because you see their grind all the time. And you're mm -hmm. like, man, they don't fucking stop. So I shouldn't stop. Right. And then you start feeling guilty, but then yeah, it's just a mixture of things, but I applaud you for taking some some time to to focus on yourself because that's very important. You know, I, I think that uh, especially as men, yeah, it is so hard. I mean, you get you get around all your friends, and uh, you know, I'm I'm a big proponent of. A, I think a lot of people make mountains out of molehills, yeah. and a lot of things are really easy. Yeah, like that people make really hard, but I think as men, it's we can't really talk to each other about yeah. feelings. We yeah. can't talk to each other about like, man, like this really sucks. This yeah. is what I'm dealing with. We yeah. just don't do that. Instead, yeah. it's like. You get slapped on the back and have a, have a drink on me. Yeah, yeah, you know yeah, what I mean? Yeah. So one thing that's helped me a lot is really just when I feel emotion, I'm, I've always been a very emotionally driven person. So like if I get upset about something, I use that as fuel to work harder um, or I, I wear my heart on my sleeve type of person. Mm -hmm. And lately I've been really trying, like if I feel an emotion, right? If I see something online and it upsets me or I see whatever, I really try to get to the root of why I feel that way. Right. And be like, okay, I'm upset at this. Why? Oh, that's ridiculous. Yeah. You know, yeah. like I'm in a relationship pretty new yeah. and like, I'm really trying this time to be like, <laughs> you know, just when anything happens, yeah. like, you know, anything, instead of me just being automatically irritated or upset or like, you know, that it's just like, okay, slow down. Yeah. Like don't respond emotionally. Take yeah. the time to stop and think yeah. and go about it accordingly and just do it simply being cognizant of your own emotions and how you react to things yeah. is, is like a complete game changer. Yeah. Completely. Not that I don't mess up. Yeah. So I still do, but yeah. it's just the idea that even understanding that a lot of your emotions and the way you feel about things come from a certain place. And a lot of us haven't even dug deep enough to figure out where that place is. No, I agree. And like, we're more reactive than proactive. Mm -hmm. That's my, my and, issue too. And, and a quote I heard that really uh, helped me out a lot was um, basically we question all of our beliefs except for the ones we truly believe. Yeah. So we look around us and we question everything except for the things we hold so true in our heart. We never think to question those. That's true. Like, you know, we speak a lot of things over ourselves. Like I always told myself like, I sleep bad. Yeah. I'll never be able to sleep good. Yeah. Or I can't do this because I'm why, right? And we yeah. sell these things over ourselves and they're not even true most yeah. of the time. We just have these beliefs that we hold that we speak over ourselves. And it's like, I used to think I was the worst sleeper in the world. And then once I like realized that I just didn't say that about myself and I really wasn't, I sleep like a baby now. Yeah. Or I used to tell myself like, man, like you, <laughs> I, I, I'm hot headed. Yeah. I'm like, man, you're always going to be a hot head. You're always going to be angry. And then as soon as I like told myself, wait a minute, like, no, you, you have emotions. You, you can figure this out. Yeah. Boom. Yeah. Way, way better off. Yeah. It's all about mindset. I mm -hmm. agree. Yeah. And what you, what you speak to yourself, you know, it's right. so important. The way you speak things is the way you think about yeah. things. No, and I if agree. you're constantly having negative self-talk, yeah. you know, yeah. like no, no wonder, like, like when people, people tell me like, I, I'm extreme example, but like when people are like, I'm fat and out of shape and single because I'm depressed. I'm like, no, you're depressed because you're fat and out of shape and single. Yeah. A lot of these things we can work on. Yeah. You got to think about it. We got, we got, we got to look at it a different way. Yeah. And I tried to do, it's called, there's a name for it. It's escaping me. But instead of looking at like, 
So like instead of starting at a problem, start to finish, you look at it in reverse. So like instead of being like, um, okay, if I eat crap, I'm going to be fat. Yeah. You look at it like, all right, if I want to be fat, what do I have to do to be fat? I got to eat crap. I got to not work out. Yeah. You got to look at the problems in reverse. Right. And you, then you just do the opposite of that. That's true. Yeah. A lot of people, the thing is a lot of people victimize themselves. A of lot. course they do. A lot. Of so course that's, they do. that's the issue. Of course they do. But yeah, no. Um, the society we live in nowadays and the culture promotes it as well. Yeah, no, it does. It promotes it. It, it really does. And everybody, it sucks. Everybody seeks victimhood status. Yeah. Everybody wants to be part of some group that they're not even really a part of because it gives them some sort of social currency that they can flip around and make yeah. people treat them a certain way. Yeah. When in reality, they're just not even doing the simple shit. You just got to do the simple shit. Yeah, I know. I agree. Yeah. All right, so it, um, what has kept you motivated to keep going? Besides your driven self. <laughs> You're all like, I'm just driven. Yeah, um, you know, I would say what keeps me motivated is I got a lot of people that depend on me. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like yeah. owning a, um, I mean, so being like 50-50 in this company with my business partner, he handles a lot of the back end stuff, like making sure the orders go through, a lot of logistics, things like that. Whereas I'm solely, I'm, I do some of the branding and all that stuff. I handle the website and stuff, but mainly I got to make sure people show up and buy. Yeah. And if I quit doing what I do, company revenue goes down, hurts our employees, hurts the bottom line, hurts the growth. I just gave one of the, one of my proudest achievements of all time was I was able to move my brother out of Ohio and give him a job. Okay. Yeah. Yay, congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. That's, Thank you. that's awesome. Thank you. Literally changed his life. Yeah. Literally changed his life. So he depends on me. Yeah. And you know, I think honestly, because you motivated is, uh, I just know that if I'm not doing what I need to do, mm -hmm. I'm just not a happy person. Yeah. Yeah. I'm depressed. I'm the same. Yeah. Like I try to explain this to people. I can't even tell you the last time I took a lazy day, wake up and do nothing all day. Yeah. I have a, yeah. can't even remember. Damn. Can't even remember. Yeah. You know? And it's because like if I wake up and I'm just laying in bed, I start feeling guilty. I feel like I'm not doing it something, yeah, right? There's yeah. something that could be done. Yeah. Like for me to even have a day that's like, you know, I guess vacations. Yeah. You know, I've been taking those recently. So I guess vacation, you consider a vacation a lazy day. Yeah. But like to just wake up in the house and stay in bed. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> doesn't happen. Okay. I, I just can't. Yeah. You know? So uh yeah, I think mainly because I just know for me, you know, I don't take any medication, I don't do nothing. I just uh, do what I do and what makes me happy. My antidepressants are getting my shit done. And yeah. 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 Same with me with my anxiety too. Sometimes like, especially now, like people like to shit on people who do, like to do cardio, but they're like, oh, she's going to run herself in the ground with all the cardio she does. I'm like, this is my anxiety medication. Like, you know what I mean? Like, this is what makes me happy. So I do 40 minutes of cardio every single day, yeah. no matter what. This last month has been a roller coaster. I've had injuries and crazy surgeries and stuff. Mm -hmm. So it's been a little off, but there for, it was over like a year and a half mainly. I did 40 minutes of hard cardio every single day with no breaks. Yeah. The best you ever feel is when that cardio is done. Yeah. The best. Yeah. I get off of that, no matter how bad of a day I'm having, I get off that cardio and I like have a new pep in my step. Yeah, yeah, you I'm do. Like sliding through the gym like I'm a rollerblades <laughs> or something. Yeah, yeah, no, I, yeah. I completely agree. Okay, so what do you think, like what advice would you give someone who wants to start a business with someone else? Like for me, like, you know, Chris and I are business partners, but it right. is scary to try to think about, okay, having a business partner yeah. that's not fan, like mm -hmm. not Chris. So. I mean, I'm sure you've had your struggles. What would you give, like, what advice would you give with someone who has a business partner? All right, so. I'm like, I'm not gonna, don't say anything you don't wanna say. No, I got it, I got it, I got it, I got it. I, uh, so my first settlement company I owned with, so what happened was, there was a settlement company called Pure Bollocks. Mm -hmm. They sold amino acids. I got sponsored by them early on in my YouTube career. Company wasn't selling anything. I started shouting them out in videos. They started selling stuff. I started getting paid commission. It was going well. So they, the two guys that owned it approached me and my business partner now about partnering with them. Okay. They saw that, well, actually I was selling, I'll explain his part. Yeah. So don't realize it at the time, young and dumb, had no idea. We bought in, we paid them money. I think we each spent like 20, what was it, like 20, 22,500 a piece or we each had to buy in to the company for, I think we got a really, I think we each got 15% or no, 12 and a half percent a piece, I believe. Okay. So we got 25% of the company for $22,000 a piece. And we didn't realize we were being taken advantage of. So what they did was they brought us in so they didn't have to pay me commission anymore. Ah, uh, okay. Okay, so yeah. I was all the sales. And then my business partner had a warehouse or he had his supplement store in town. They knew he had an empty back room. So they moved all the logistics and shipping and everything 
to him and put him in charge of shipping everything. So I'm the reason people are buying. He's selling and shipping everything. The other two guys are sitting back doing nothing. And when it came time to take our quarterly draws, me and him each got, I mean, like $8,000 and they each got like, it was an insane amount, yeah. more than us. And that was when I flipped my shit. Yeah. And I, yeah, I wanted out. I said, you guys have to buy me out. I'm getting a lawyer. We got lawyers yeah. and I got yeah. out of it. So we clearly taken advantage of them. They're willing to make no concessions to make me happy. Yeah. None. So that company, it still exists, but in a really crappy format because those dudes were greedy. Yeah. So my business partner now, Ankram, my best friend as well, we, as business partners, I mean, well, we've had a few mini disagreements, mm -hmm. but honestly, from the beginning, we had this very, uh, this very deep understanding that it was going to be a relationship that was built out of respect. Okay. Like, look, I'm not going to screw you over. You don't got to worry about me stealing money from the company. You don't have to question anything about me. And I don't have to question anything about you. Cause if I have to, or if anything weird happens, both of us were in agreement, like we'll burn this thing down. Yeah. If either one of us screws the other one over. Yeah, yeah. So being best friends, having that understanding from the beginning and uh, knowing that our only goal is to both make as much money as possible and have fun while doing it. Yeah. That is the goal. Yeah, yeah. And boom, we've been all these years I've, you know, and it's in a business partner. It's so easy in the beginning to go, yeah, I'm going to do a business with this person, but you really have to know that person because yeah. not a lot of people are going to work as hard as you're willing to work about your idea. I mean, I, I remember with that old company, we had the, we had one guy, we had the, the two guys in the back. One of them did some stuff. He, he like handled like some of the computer stuff, really easy stuff, but he at least did something. The fourth one did nothing. And I would ask like, Hey, you're doing nothing. Will you go grab a camera and take some photos for these for us. Yeah. Like, cause I was in charge of making people buy. I had to take all the photos, do all the videos and my own YouTube channel at the same time. Yeah. So other guy did nothing. Yeah. Wouldn't do anything. Yeah. Lazy. And then it was mental health and depression. Yeah. You know, we're cool now. So yeah. if he's, for some reason he's listening to this, we're cool now, <laughs> but it was just the idea that like, yeah. So the worst thing you could do, and actually someone I know that I'm very close to a relative of mine just had to buy out his business partner because of the same thing. He just wasn't working. Yeah. So you got to find someone that's willing to work and someone that might not even do the same stuff you do. Yeah. I mean, I can do completely different things, but he knows if I say I'm going to do it, I do it Yeah. and vice versa. Cause I think one thing you really got to watch with people is you got to make sure that when they say something, they mean it. Yeah. The amount of people that'll just say like, Oh, I'll do that. And then yeah. they don't, they don't the amount that. of people down here I've given chances to and jobs to that have completely let me down and lied and stolen from me yeah. is insane. Yeah. Yeah. Especially, especially like so many of these kids are so entitled. They think that like all this success shit happens overnight and you get all the money overnight and then you give them an opportunity and you go above and beyond for them. Yeah. And then, yeah, then you find out they're stealing yeah. from you. And then you yeah. find out like that they're milking the claw. You just find out. Yeah. yeah. Bunch of shit. Bunch yeah. of shit. Yeah. No, I think it's great that, you know, you went into business, not only with your friend, but you knew his work ethic was there because I, I actually have my parents too. Like, told them don't go into business. You can't always just go into business with friends because no. you may be cool as drinking buddies and hanging out on the weekends with your carne asada, your cookouts and shit. Yeah. But when it comes time to work, that's when you really know people. So mm -hmm. I feel like, yeah, I think with going into business, you really have to make sure you go into business with someone who has matches your work ethic. If not, is like even better than you. Of course. You know? But okay. I just yeah, wanted well, to add and, and too, like I remember there was one time we were, uh, we had an apparel company, Final Boss Athletics, that we've since disbanded. But an apparel company, we got a call one time that uh, an order that we had shipped from overseas to here had arrived, but it had arrived like 20 days earlier. No one let us know. It had collected $500 a day sitting at the dock. Mm -hmm. So we had to show up with 10 grand to get it out. And we only had like a, like a couple of days to do it. And me and my business partner found out. And we literally had to like, on a whim, drive get a moving truck, drive there, wait. It was like a whole like 10 hour ordeal. We didn't get home till like midnight. We were both exhausted, tired, didn't want to do it, Yeah. but we had to. Yeah. So who's the person you call when everything's on the line and they're willing to, no matter what they have going on, drop what they're doing for the goodness of the brand and the yeah. business, that's the person you want. Yeah, that's true. Yeah, good. Okay, so we only have two more questions. All right, if given the chance, what is something you would tell past rem? I would tell who? Oh, past rem. Yeah, past rem. Start boxing sooner. Start boxing sooner? <laughs> No, I, I, yeah, I, I love boxing now, but okay. no, if I had to tell pass room sooner, um, it doesn't matter what anybody else thinks. Okay. It doesn't matter. Yeah. I spent so much of my YouTube career reading every comment and I could have a hundred good ones and one would say I was doing something wrong and I would adjust my next video off that one comment. Yeah. Or I would look at, I would take advice my mom would give me, friends would give me about what I should do with YouTube or whatever. And they've never even done it. Yeah. So yeah. 
I just, at the end of the day, I think so many people, we carry around these chains of expectation for people in our lives. Like our parents put a lot of expectations on us. Yes. Our friends put expectations on us. And we, we carry around all this weight, right? I think your best is to just shred that. Yeah. Do what you want to make you happy. Yeah. And if you're nervous about pulling a camera out and filming, you're nervous people are gonna think you're, you look a certain way when you're doing stuff. Understand that there's always gonna be people that don't like you, yeah. that are gonna make fun of you. The amount of shit that I've heard about myself is insane. I'll read some things about myself. I go, man, I don't like that guy either. You know? But like, but like, that's always going to be there. Yeah, yeah. yeah. At the end of the day, if I wouldn't, if I wouldn't have pushed through, and I would have just like given up when all those criticisms happen, yeah, I wouldn't be here. Yeah, I agree. I, the same with us. Like, I feel like our journey. We, there's always been like negative comments. Someone's always had something to say. Always, especially the last two years with my OnlyFans, I've lost a lot of friends because. You know, people, t I, and I, the thing is, I understand people have their opinions. I of get course, it. I respect it. But what I think about myself matters more. Of course. So yeah. Well, that's, I, that's really the only opinion. Yeah. Yeah. At the end of the day. Yeah. And if you're making money yeah. and you're killing it, what's, what's the difference? Yeah. yeah. What's the difference? Like use every avenue you can to make money. Like I'm never going to look at how someone's making money. I guess unless you're selling fentanyl and people are dying. Yeah. But like <laughs> I'm never going to judge how you're making money. Like if you're making money and you're killing it. Yeah. That's it. Yeah. Same with but, me. But some people don't you know, they, they see you succeeding and they absolutely, it, for some reason, I mean, you can get on Twitter and see how angry half the country is about yeah. shit. So it's like, some people will see what you're doing. Some get inspired. If I see a guy drive down the street in a Lamborghini, I want to go talk to him yeah. to figure out how he made his money. Yeah. It's inspiring to me. Some people see that. They're like, oh, that's a drug dealer, yeah. you know, yeah. or you know, whatever. Yeah. Like, but it's like, what type of person are you? Are you a glass half full person? Glass half empty. Yeah. You can look at any situation, and put a positive spin on it. Right. Even the worst shit that's happened to me in these last, I mean, I've been going through some shit this last month. Mm -hmm. Just a lot of injuries. I dislocated my shoulder again. I had a bad mouth infection that uh, they said almost killed me. That's, yeah. Mouth infections are not Insane. something you joke around with. Yeah. I, the whole left side of my face is still numb. Oh shit. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Oh, they had damn. to cut a huge chunk out of my mouth. Crazy. Holy crap. Crazy. Yeah. Crazy. Oh, damn. I know. So it's been tough, Yeah. but it's like, you can wallow in it and lay in bed, yeah. you know, or you can, you know, I literally couldn't move this arm for like three days. I have way more mobility now, but yeah. for like three days it was terrible. And I had to film a video and like, normally I'm very animated. I talk with my hands a lot, yeah. but like in my videos I had to be like, what is up guys? Welcome. Yeah. Cause I can't yeah. can't, yeah. you know, but like you just, yeah, you no, know, you, gotta, you can find a silver lining in everything. I think the problem is a lot of people now don't give themselves any sort of personal conflict as, as a people, as a species, as human beings, I'm going to go a little deep here. We love conflict. Yeah. We do. We always have. And I feel like if you give yourself no conflict in your life, whether through the gym, you don't give yourself anything to make you push yourself. You don't have to do anything like that. Then you invent conflict in your life. And I think that's why some people get so quote unquote depressed. They get so down. They feel like life sucks because they, they've given themselves no struggle. Yeah. And I think Joe Rogan said this, but it's like the worst thing that happened to you is still only the worst thing that's happened to you. So if the worst thing you've had to deal with is you got called a name on Facebook, then if something really bad happens, you're going to crumble. Yeah. You're going to crumble. Yeah. But if you put yourself into situations that aren't exactly ideal, things that scare you and you do stuff, then when that type of stuff happens, you can shrug it off and laugh. That's very true. So yeah. I, I think everybody should make themselves uncomfortable, yeah. push themselves, struggle a little bit. Yeah. Okay. All right. So I have one more question. This is going to be for my ladies. This is a fun question. <laughs> okay, okay, okay? Good. I, All right. Well, Cause it, we have to end the, the podcast. Cause this is a provocative podcast. We have to got end you. it with a okay. fun question. Ask me whatever. Okay. All right. Are you ready? Yes. Okay. Do you like to eat ass? Yes. <laughs> yes. Every time. Okay. Ev every time. Okay. Nonstop. All Maybe right. a little too much. <laughs> oh my God. Mm -hmm. Okay. So, okay. This wasn't on here. I almost got a bottom feeder tattoo. Stop. Oh my gosh. Okay. So question, <laughs> yeah. would you, okay. I don't know if you're going to answer this. No, I'll answer anything. Would you, you eat ass on like a, like a hookup? Like just a one, like you're hooking up with this girl. You just met her like um, in the club. It, if it's at the club, it, <laughs> probably. You're still, even though probably. she has like a sweaty if ass. If I'm drinking, yes. Okay. If I've been drinking, yes. Yeah. If, if it's one of those things where we're out and I'm not, I mean, probably yes all the way around. Okay. Yeah. Probably just yes. Yeah, I don't know. We were thinking, I was telling But it also you. depends on the girl. Yeah. Too, you know what I mean? Well, I'm like, man, I was, we were at the club and I was so sweaty and I'm like, <laughs> these guys are so sweaty. These girls are so sweaty. They're drunk. They're going to go home. I'm like, they don't give a fuck, I guess. Yeah. Like they're all sweaty, whatever. What's wrong but with a little sweat? <laughs> Okay, there's nothing wrong. I guess <laughs> if you know, I feel like if I was more comfortable with the person, yeah, but yeah. all right, all right. 
So you'll eat ass. Okay. Anyways, where, tell people where they can follow you. Uh, you follow me on Instagram at the Remington James. If you type in, if you go to theanabar.com, you can check out the best tasting protein bar on the market. If you go to YouTube and type in Remington James, I'll pop up. Really, if you type in Remington James anywhere, I'm going to pop okay, up. I'll put his stuff regardless in the description box for you ladies. Anything else you want to say to... Uh, it's been a pleasure. I, I guess I have one question. Is your your audience is majority female, right? I think it's majority female. A lot of like the boyfriend's husbands still listen to it. Okay. I get DMs all the time about it and they actually really, really love it too. Okay. I don't want the podcast to just solely be female. Right, right. But um, yeah, so having like multiple guests yeah. in here will, will help that. But yeah, the ladies are like my ride or die. For the provocative, like that's what I was telling you. Like with social media, like uh, you, you know, you get a lot of love, you get a lot of hate, of but with the podcast, I've gotten like support. Well, it's because like with a podcast and I find this too, um, I'm big, I'm a big Joe Rogan fan. Yeah. I listen to like every episode. Yeah. I edit so much footage and I always have a podcast on. You just listen after a while and you just, you feel like you get to know people. Yeah, yeah. So like when you see certain negative things said or whatever, you're like, yeah, you're entitled to your opinion, but I have listened to this particular person articulate and talk forever. Yeah. yeah. If they were this evil scumbag, I think I might have picked up on yeah, it. And yeah, I think yeah. I think when you do a podcast, you do these long form conversations, you can really get to know somebody. I agree. Yeah. So, I feel like I can be my my true authentic self on here. Yeah. No judgment. Even though there's probably judgment, but I don't care. Like I'm just hey. like, this is me. But anyways, thank you. Thank you for being on the podcast. I really appreciate it. Hey, you. I appreciate you having me. I'm down. Just let me know. Yeah. If you if you you want me to come back and you want to yeah. do all questions like the last one, I'm for that too. Okay, Shit. yeah. All, all, all right, down. ladies. Okay. And I'll be honest. Okay. <laughs> yeah, that's a hard thing. Some guys are just I, not honest. I just recently started, I just got out of a long relationship. So I've been d dating and then found a new girlfriend. So okay. I've been, my mind's been all over this stuff. All right, man. You might have some good stories. And I'm going to bring you on. <laughs> I got great ones. All right, guys. So I'll put all his stuff in the description. Um, I appreciate you guys so much. And I will see you guys next week. Bye. Bye-bye. <laughs> Oh, 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 oh,